I recently received an other batch of Locunet interface boards from the PCB manufacturer. And of course, as more people are using the interface for their application, I am also getting more questions. In this video, I am going to answer some of the more frequent ones and include some videos I received from viewers showing how they use the Locunet interface board. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. A typical microcontroller like the Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano or the ESP32 on an IoTT stick has IO pins that use a voltage of either 3.3 or 5 volts. Loconet on the other hand is using around 12 volts to communicate data. Furthermore, a microcontroller typically uses separate IOs for transmitting and receiving data while Loconet is configured as a one-wire network with only one data line for the communication between all connected devices. Therefore, to make information flow between Loconet and the microcontroller, we need a device that can convert the signals and that is the function of the Loconet interface board. On one side it has two RJ12 sockets to connect standard Loconet cables. On the other end, it has a 4-pin growth connector for the connection to a microcontroller. The 4 pins are used for ground, 5 volts, transmit and receive. The DC plug is used for Loconet termination, in other words, building a Loconet without using a command station. So if you just want to connect a microcontroller to a working Loconet, you do not need the DC plug at all only Loconet and the growth connector. Here is what I cover in this video. First, I am showing you how to use the interface board with an Arduino Uno or Nano to make it act as a switch decoder. Next, I show you a video I received from Pierre in Canada, where he shows how he is using the interface board with an IoTT stick to connect to MQTT and eventually drive NeoPixels on a blue hat. And finally, a video from John, he is from Canada as well, where he shows how he is using the interface board on a standalone Loconet along with a Bluetooth interface and smartphone for device configuration. Lots to discover, so let's get started. To use the Loconet interface with Arduino, here is what you need. A Loconet interface, an Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano with USB cable to your PC, and a growth port cable ideally with pin connectors on the other side. Alternatively, you can also solder some fine wires directly to the growth port connector on the board. The hardware setup is simple. Connect red and black wires to 5 volt and ground of the Arduino. The yellow wire is the receive signal and goes to pin 8. The white wire is transmit and is connected to pin 7. Then you open your Arduino IDE. If you have not yet installed the Loconet library, you open the library manager, key in Loconet and install it. The current version is 114. If you have an older version, you might want to upgrade it. After installation of the library, you need to open your library folder and open the Loconet master utility subfolder. Open the file config.h and make sure that the defines for inverted transmit and receive signals are not commented out. You find the defines somewhere around line 70. Remove the comment marks if needed and save the file. Now you can open the Loconet control panel example from the Loconet examples installed in the Arduino IDE. As you see, the example expects Loconet on pins 7 and 8 of the Arduino, that's exactly how we wired it. Pins 5 and 6 are used as input buttons to activate the switch, so you can install two buttons that pull the IO lines to ground when pressed. In line 31 of the example program, you can define the switch address you want the Arduino to respond to. By default it is set to 25. Now you connect the Arduino to USB of your computer and select the correct board and port number. 
Then you click, click the Compile and Upload button and when Arduino is done, you should be able to control the onboard LED of the Arduino from your handheld throttle using switch address number 25. Close will switch it on, thrown will turn it off. Now you can use the button inputs 5 and 6 and you will see the same thing happen. So you have some local buttons too. And best of all, the button input is communicated to Loconet, so if there is another switch 25 on your layout, it will be operated as well. And if you have a Loconet viewer like the smartphone Loconet viewer from video number 57, you will see the commands come through as well, as soon as you activate one of the input buttons. Looking into the Arduino example code, it is quite simple, since all the complicated stuff is already done for you in the Loconet library, which can simply be included in the program. The send opcode switch request function takes as parameters the address, direction and call status and creates a valid Loconet message that meets the specifications given in the Loconet PE document. It then sends it to Loconet. The set ln turnout function provides an interface for that on a slightly higher level. It just needs address and direction and then sends two messages to the network, one for activating the coil of the solenoid, the other to turn it off. The setup function initializes all IO pins and starts the Loconet interface library. And the loop function primarily watches the input buttons and sends a Loconet command if a button was pressed. Then it checks for incoming Loconet messages. If there is one, it calls the process switch sensor message function, which then checks what's in the message and calls one of the notification functions to adjust the onboard LED if a command for switch 25 was received. So nothing neither complicated nor surprising, but a good example to see how everything works. With that, you have the basics in place. You can decode messages from Loconet and you can send messages to Loconet. You now can add more switches or you can add a servo PWM board and drive servos or whatsoever. One technical footnote before I move on. The Loconet interface board is designed for a microcontroller with 3.3V IO pins. The Uno on the other hand is using 5V on the IOs. However, so far all UNOs I have used successfully accepted the 3.3V inputs from the interface board. But just in case I designed the board in a way that it can easily be converted to 5V if needed. So if you run into problems on a 5V microcontroller, you can change the signal voltage level by simply removing resistor R7 from the breakout board. And with that said, let's move on to the second example. Pierre sent me a nice video from his N-Scale layout, so let's watch it. Hi, I am Pierre Labbe. Welcome to my layout. Here, presentation of my IOTC device. Here the underside of my layout. I'm using an AAC command station with the L Loconet converter, LNet converter, and I'm using as well the IOTT with a blue hat and that will be used later on and a Loconet to MQTT gateway. So I'm using this device to automate my layout, provide route and many other features. What Pierre shows here is what I would call the standard application of the Loconet interface board. If you watched video number 59, where I gave an architectural overview, you probably remember this drawing. What Pierre is doing is what is shown right here. A Loconet interface is used to connect an IoTT stick to Loconet. The IoTT stick has a function head connected to it which provides some input and output functions. In Pierre's case, it's a blue hat instead of the yellow hat shown in the drawing. But he also has activated the MQTT interface from where the Loconet commands are sent to an MQTT broker and then distributed to other MQTT clients. 
So in this case the LocoNet interface works as communication bridge between the IoT T-Stick and the physical LocoNet, the same way as we have seen in the Arduino example. The stick software, of course, is a little more complex than the simple Arduino example as the stick has much more functionality, but at the core it is the same. A command is received and some action executed. And in the other direction, a status change of a button is detected and a message sent to LocoNet. If you are interested to have a closer look into the software, you can download it from my GitHub page listed below. The third example I am showing today is from John, who sent me another nice video. By the way, John is also running his own YouTube channel, Clinchfield Model Railroad. Check it out! And if you like it, subscribe to it, so you don't miss out if he is posting new videos. Here's the first part of the video John sent me. In this video I'm talking about how I set up a um, standalone local net uh, connection to test my uh, panel. This is a um, PCB board that I had made uh, that represents my uh, Clinchfield N-Scale uh, model railroad. And... Um, on the panel here I have, uh, I'm installing LEDs and push buttons. One of the things is on the back of this board here I'm using some local net hardware. This is called from a company called MGP in uh, Sweden. And uh, they're local net devices, but, and they power, you power them on five volts, but they require, uh, you know, to connect them to the local net, they need the 12 volts on, uh, on the local net, uh, cable but then they also need what they call termination to program these boards it requires uh, an app that's on um, android so um, i have to and that has to be connected through bluetooth so here is a bluetooth uh, local net bluetooth device to plug in and uh, the other thing i needed was uh, besides the power was um, a termination uh, connection for uh, local net so in this case, I'm using uh, the IOTT board, the local net board here. And um, you have to connect power. Once you connect, if you power this board, it'll, it'll give you that termination uh, information. If you see, if I'll, I'll unplug it, and then we'll see here some problems happening. See, this red light tells me that there's an issue. So what he is doing is setting up a local net that is not connected to a command station. He is using it to connect some Moleham control panel decoders, a device similar to the yellow hat, just with fewer buttons and LEDs that can be connected. And as always with relatively complex devices, the main problem for the user is configuration. For the IoT T-Stick, I have chosen to have a web server so that configuration can be done in a web app. Moleham has opted for using a cell phone app and sells a LocoNet to Bluetooth interface that allows for connecting the app to LocoNet and do the configuration of the panel decoder. So John wants to use the Bluetooth interface but on a standalone LocoNet without connection to his central unit. To make that happen, he needs a LocoNet terminator, which is a simple current source that provides voltage to the LocoNet communication line, so that LocoNet is active. Now, Moleham sells a separate terminator device, but since John already has a LocoNet interface, it is just easier to use it to power his standalone LocoNet. All he needs to do is plug in 12V DC to the power jack, and he is ready to go. But that's not all that John did. Let's watch the second part of his video. And I also have it plugged into the IoTT stick. And uh, for good measure, also um, a local net connection to a PC. So if I plug the power back in, that message will go away. The blue uh, light connects. Then now I can go to my, uh, my app here. So here I'm going to my local net, uh, the Bluetooth app. So it comes up and now what's neat is that now I see my boards here that are, uh, basically I have three boards in the back there and I see the three boards here. Um, what I can do is go into what they call terminal mode. And uh, now what's gonna happen is as I 
put information press buttons here you're gonna see uh, some information come up there on the board yeah. so that's pretty neat and then the other thing is since the IOT stick IOTT stick uh, is connected it might be hard to see but there's also messages that are scrolling there if you go into the the DCC viewer I'll flip some switches and you'll see some numbers changing here too then the other thing I have going on is again with the with the stick uh, it's all the Wi-Fi connected I'm running a node red and um, MQTT on my uh, Raspberry Pi so what's happening is again this is what the interface looks like and uh, you can see here some messages if I toggle a button you'll see some stuff uh, some changes will happen let's see might be difficult to see the numbers but changes are happening and I also installed th this uh, software that uh, was recently released and it gives you in plain English the uh, better information display of information so I can select down here clear then now I can call up uh, let's say I can filter the messages I can ask for switches and block occupancy so then now when I flip a switch on the board see it tells me uh, report position of switch number 80 closed with auxiliary input high switch 80 uh, to close with uh, coil and now if I uh, if I go on this tablet here and let me see I can uh, uh, terminal mode I can ask I can might be sorry if it's a reflection here I can ask for a block to be occupied in this case block 38 I'll be ask I'll ask it to be occupied I'll send the information here and then when you look back up here you'll see report status of block 38 as occupied so um, and then all that stuff is going to cause lights on this board to uh, to turn basically to turn on uh, basically when routes are selected you know lights will in this case the light will turn blue the, the block is occupied it'll turn red um, and so forth a lot of neat little stuff on, on this that part i think makes it really interesting by simply powering the dc jack on the interface board john creates a working standalone loconet that can be extended as john shows he can connect it to MQTT using the IOTT stick as gateway. You also can connect it to JMRI using a local buffer USB interface and with the next version of the IOTT stick software you will even be able to make that connection using Locunet over TCP without using a local buffer USB. That makes it possible to use JMRI to bridge between systems, for example you can run your trains using an NCE system and then have a standalone Locunet to connect trackside devices from various manufacturers that provide Locunet compatible items like block detectors, switch decoders or the panel decoders that John is using. Then you can bring all the information together in JMRI and go from there. Quite promising and exciting I think. So I hope these three examples give you an idea what the Locunet interface is used for and how to integrate it into your layout control system. And that's it for this video. As always I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you learned something that gives you fresh ideas for setting up the control system on your model railroad layout. If so, Click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.